So I. Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to present my presentation that's managing construction accident disputes in Hong Kong, a formal institutional approach. So I'm Dr. Rita Yi Man Lee, uh, the Sustainable Real Estate Research Center Director of, of Hong Kong Xi'an University. So this figure is shows the um, uh, construction accidents and also the accident rate per 1,000 workers in construction industry from 2005 to 2014. And then you can see that there is a V-shape in the construction accidents uh, cases, number of construction accident cases. The number of the construction accident rate is more or less uh, in the in the level. And then you can see that uh, uh, that we have got the highest random record in two, in 2005 with 3,048 accidents that happened in that year, with the lowest one record in, two, uh, in 2009 with 2,755 uh, construction accidents. And then it rises sharp, however, to 2014 with 3,467 in 2014. And then construction accidents lead to both the physical and even psychological damage to sufferers. And the sufferers bear the medical expense, which can cause heavy financial burden, long term illness, and loss in earning ability, which worsen their quality of lives. So plaintiffs who suffer damage from the accident may seek for compensation to cover the medical expenses under various legislations. And in Hong Kong, there are well-established no fault schemes administered by the Hong Kong Hong Kong government. Then we have got the criminal and also the law enforcement injuries compensation scheme, employees compensation ordinance in Chapter Two Eight Two, the occupational deafness compensation ordinance in Chapter Four Hundred and Nine and Sixty Nine, and the limonious compensation ordinance in Chapter Three Hundred and Sixty. So, um, in economics aspects, the comp compensation schemes can be recorded when we regarded as a third party's uh, institutions to solve the conflict between the injury and also the uh, the suffering, and that helps them to internalize the com economic externalities. Uh, however, monetary reward claimed through the no fault compensation scheme is often less than the plaintiff wishes to claim. Inevitably, sufferers take action to sue the contractors, uh, the contractors' employers under the framework of tort law. Tort law as a fault compensation scheme assists them, uh, the plaintiffs to claim the compensation from defendants by proving the fault committed by wrongdoers. So tort law has got a pretty long history that should be solved uh, the uh, social conflict. The rationale of using tort law is the past is to uh, is to add as a kind of corrective justice. Aristotle clearly stated that the eventual purpose and also the only proper effect of using tort law is to rectify the wrongful behavior, and uh, from a person instead of to improve the level of the resource allocation. So beyond that, tort law is inevitably involving the idea of social norm, uh, so as to uh, uh, in order to judge the wrongful act. So say for instance whether the contractors that they should bear more of the uh, of the uh, course in the construction accidents due to failure in provision of the safety belts, due to failure in provision of the uh, construction accident training, or due to failure failure to provide a good place for work, and sometimes we have to identify that is whether, like for example, in case of Hong Kong, we have got a lot of subcontractors and so as sub 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 contractor and sub 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 contractors. So the major question is: So who should bear higher level of the responsibility? Should that be the developer, or should that be the contractor, or should that be another person, or even the workers? Who they or are they themselves that they need to bear the cause of the accidents? Why tort law? So according to the hands, so he said is that tort law allows a person to seek for damage compensation if his claim is not based on contractual obligation. It's quite difficult to find that every single uh, moment by the time the construction accidents that we have got a contract uh, to uh, oblige somebody that you have to pay a compensation because each of the single time by the time we talk about construction accidents that they have their own characteristics. Sometimes the workers have to pay a uh, very high uh, uh, they that they have to bear the responsibility due to most of the uh, most of the accidents that come from the worker themselves. Or say, for instance, in on the other hand, that should the developer or should the contractor uh, be made responsible uh, responsible for that particular accident, there is a. Uh, there is a uh, uh, there is there is a very strong ex uh, there there is something for which that the workers that they have to think about that the damages can be resulted from the lower social impairment if the private property health life limb from the infringement of the rights or from the pure financial or non financial losses and the economic aspect.
any damage would lower the level of utility, in the matter of the individual or society as a whole. So according to Rick, tort law is used to rectify wrongful acts, which will lead to results in the harmful consequences in terms of the personal injury or the property damage. Some critics thought that where well, tort law is not 100% that is perfect. In particular, the tort provided uh, by the government as a public good and the provision of the public good in such a free market affects the efficiency of tort. What they say is that pro- tort law is one of the market failures, so tort law you can just consider as kind of the public good, which is also a kind of market failure. The aim of the tort is, however, it is to promote efficiency. However, it said that there is now such problematic of the provision of the pu- public tort law if the government is treated, treated as a business of providing public good. The basic law of tort uh, relies on the basic concept of the utility analysis. He assumes that the utility of any individual depends on the income level, which have the assumed uh, as wealth, and then uh, so that uh, the level of the utility, individual utility, is associated with a different level of income, and PI is a probability at each state. So due to the constraint of the utility maximization, everyone, uh, any individual that would choose the highest expected utility among all the available prospects, and the post law further ex- extended that the expected utility analysis associated with the accidents in order to match with the analysis of the tort law. So he asserted that there are only two possible outcomes in the model. There is the accidents occur and also there is no accident. So it's a zero or one de- uh, as a dependent variable. The probability of the accident to occur is P and thus 1 minus P implies that there is no accident. And the utility exp- uh, the expected utility is therefore is shown in the following equation. And where I O and I1 is the income level under the ac- uh, under the accident and non accident respectively, with the I O is great is smaller than I1. The model is particularly useful for us to predict the level of care that is needed to maximize the uh, expected utility. And since the level of the care would affect the chance of accidents occur, uh, according to the points that is stated in 1980, and the high level of care, the lower chance of the accident that will occur. The figure, the foreign figure, shows the three general types of utility function that we have got the risk adverse, risk preferring, and also risk neutral. And then we can see that uh, people tend to be risk averse in times of the uncertainty. And most of us that we are risk averse uh, by the time that we have do not have sufficient information. And it's because people do not have perfect information for any activity, they will not gamble their life to do anything for which they are not sure. So this is what we expect in case of the basic axiom of the uh, of the general human being. So Paul's law in analysis of the trough from the economic aspect, assuming both the plaintiff and also defendant is uh, uh what is risk neutral in prior uh, uh prior to risk aversion. The risk aversion assumes that people that list to a high degree of the freedom in analysis and analyzing the trough rules and therefore their reputability of their theory it will be very lower and thus hard to be confirmed. After that, there is no evidence to show that the plaintiff used tort law to reduce the risk, accident, and accident avoid course. Uh, as a result, tort assumes that plaintiff and defendant are risk neutral. So this is how we, we observe that. We try to say that, well, they did not like avoid risk or they have they love risk. So it's something for which it's somewhere in between. So uh, the research method. So what we try to do is that uh, in case of like um, the formal and uh, formal institution, the formal institution refers to the regulation, refers to the law for which it can be found in black and white. And then for our case that we try to study the uh, the, uh, the construction assets compensation under the legal framework. So how we do it is that we collect uh, 332 ca- uh, 30, uh, 320 cases from, uh, the, from the court uh, that it happened in Hong Kong. Then you can see that well, in between nineteen eighty five to nineteen to two thousand five, there are only three hundred and thirty uh three hundred and twenty cases. In spite of the fact that there are more than thousand, more than two thousand, more than three thousand of the court cases of the construction accidents that happened in the uh in Hong Kong around uh around the uh, around the small city, that provides how uh that information provides. That uh, about the compensation rewards of the construction accidents, courses of accidents, duration of the claims, and the responsibility between the plaintiff and also defense. See that uh, the construction accident compensation court cases, there are altogether 330 court cases from 1986 uh, to 2015. In 2014, however, alone, that there are already three, uh, 35 cases. 
So you can see that it's not steady, but then they are more, uh, they are getting more and more court cases as we try to compare the first half and also second half. So probably nowadays, uh, when we have got change in culture, so previously a lot of a lot of people, a lot of us avoid going uh, doing to the, put the case to the court but then now there are more and more people who try to put the case to the court in another uh, perspective is that because there are more and more construction as uh, there are more and more construction assets that happen in the society and therefore they, they have to seek for a conversation and then so that in any case we can see that uh, that in the first half that there are less case in the second half there are more cases so in some years that we uh, for example in 2009 that there are only one case so there is nothing that is like uh, a kind of like every single year that they have got such and such court cases it really depends on that particular year some have more court cases and some have less court cases so if we try to look at this table, it gives us a rough idea about the one who claimed the court, uh, for the court uh, in the court. Like for example, the age that we have got 40.8 uh, uh, years old on average. And then for the uh, for the uh, for the ECC compensation is like 320,000 with the highest one is over 2 million dollars. And then uh, we have got the PSLA, where the PSLA is a pain, suffering, loss, and uh, loss and amenities for the mental one, mental suffering that it has got like two hundred and forty seven, uh, forty eight thousand something, and then for the highest one that we have got over two million, two million, uh, uh, two million, two, uh, two million two hundred, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So that uh, loss of learning capacity, that it has got a pretty large um, uh, amount of money as well. Uh, in terms of the highest one, uh, over uh, over one one point six million. So that you can see that there are a lot of the uh, category which includes also includes like future loss of earning, loss of earning capacity. Uh, due to accident, you cannot work as before. Pre-trial loss of earnings, special damage, future treatment, uh, total compensation. So you can see a total compensation. It ranges from over one million, the lowest one, to over five million. So you may ask a question that is why usually that court, uh, the, the these cases are uh, usually they have got a pretty large amount of the money as compensation. The major reason is that uh, for the small amount of the compensation, they do not dare put to the case to the court because the uh, the the lawyers they charge a very high fee. So most likely by the time that they come to the court, they must have got a very strong uh, evidence saying that well, the, uh, the amount of compensation should be like more than one uh, more than one hundred dollars, uh, one hundred uh, more than one million dollars or more than a very huge amount of money as otherwise that it is not worth. So the duration of judgment it is quite long actually uh, with the mean year of over four years and then the lowest one from the time of the accident to the ultimate uh, uh, time that's resolved the conflict is two years and the highest one is like 10 years so therefore most likely by the time that we look at the table we have got an idea that is number one the construction accidents like really lead to a very a loss in the amount of money uh, because of the total compensation the lost one is already like over 1 million Hong Kong dollars so how much is that well, in case of the uh, in case of the uh, Hong Kong dollars to uh, the U.S. dollar that we have got uh, seven point eight Hong Kong dollars is equivalent to one U.S. dollar, so you can see that this is a uh, quite a huge sum of money because most likely by the time is, the case is put to the court, the one who suffered from the accident should have got a uh, very serious of the accidents. Like for example, they have got the, both the physical, uh, physical suffering like loss of limb, loss of hands, and then. Uh, Probably it's like also mental suffering such that they can no longer work. And so by the time we discount their backward, discount their loss in running capacity, discount the, uh, the amount of money that they have to pay, uh, so on and so forth, it can lead to a very high amount of money. So uh, here I would also like to introduce my latest book that is published in 2015 and that one is a construction safety and also waste management. And this one we have got the management in both the construction waste, how we uh, manage waste in Hong Kong and also in some places like uh, Singapore and so uh, and also Australia, how do they manage waste. As well as that we have also got another uh, another uh, uh, aspects and other things for which that we have uh, undergone that is we have got the construction safety management where how do they uh, manage the safety uh, is that just chaining or is that there are some also some other other things for which that they can engage in so this book is published by Spenger and I would like to let you know that we have got uh, a, a lot of the books there for sale and uh, uh, feel free to contact me at uh, ymd at uh, hksyu.edu 
And then I would like to uh, thank my uh, student uh, who have uh, helped me and contribute to this uh, uh, presentation. So uh, thanks very much for your listening. And then uh, if you have any questions, just send me the email and then also contact the uh, conference organizer as well. So I'd like to thank the conference organizers, uh, conference organizer for inviting me to give a presentation to this, uh, uh, to this conference.